Uh, don't forget that I started out as a hard-headed, ultra-realistic type of journalist. And we've got to be sticklers for absolute fact. Uh, the strangest thing, in fact, that ever happened to me personally on these films here was uh, when I went up a little defile uh, near Cradle Hill, at the top of Cradle Hill, uh, where there's an army rubbish refuse dump. And uh, I went along this little track because I could see clearly, or fairly clearly anyway, glowing to my right and glowing to my left. That appeared to be circular, that appeared to be cylindrical. And in front of me, a rather large light that lit up the trees in front of me. And uh, I was drawn, because it appeared to be the nearest of the three, I was drawn towards the light in front. And I thought, well, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty certain that's UFO. I couldn't explain what that was. It wasn't anything conventional. And I hastened towards it. But then I was aware of being lifted off the ground, literally. And uh, I was aware of some energy coming from the lights at either side, which had closed in rather frighteningly. But I wasn't frightened. I just teetered in midair, if you like, several feet up, obviously. And I just couldn't feel any pressure under my legs at all. And I'd stopped running. And my, my legs were simply gangling about like this without any, any foundation to, to uh, tread upon. And this went on, perhaps I was hovering in this sort of fashion, and yet still being propelled slowly forward for a good half minute or more. And that is gospel truth. You fall well, down? It was the most amazing experience I ever had. No, I didn't fall. I was simply lowered very gently back to the earth. The Flying Saucer Review is the main journal in Britain which collects all the data about all the strange things. For instance, figures like this, humanoid figures. This one, I think, reported from Finland. Um, extraordinary details of sources coming down, people being affected by rays. Um, the magazine is full of teleportation, stories of cars being moved from one place to another. Now, Charles Bowen is the editor of this. You spent years collecting all this data. What, what's it all about? I'd like to know what it's all about. I've been involved with this myself for something like 12 years, closely, as editor of the Review. We get reports from all over the world, particularly from South America, everywhere, practically. Is there any pattern? Now? There are small patterns from time to time, uh, small patterns in visual features of uh, these alleged occupants of these flying saucers or UFOs, call them what you will. People report these things. A lot of them obviously think uh, they have seen something real. Maybe they have, maybe they haven't. But the fact remains that it is largely a nocturnal phenomenon and people who often report them are people who are out working at night. Doctors on call, nurses, police, soldiers, all people like this. A lot of them very highly responsible people a lot of them people of high intellectual standard. Now all this leads you to ideas, you begin to get ideas about this subject. And uh, ideas are, what are they doing? What, are, what, is it, what is going on? We haven't a clue what is going on, but what we do know is that the people are very honest, usually, who describe these things. Very seldom do we come across deliberate hoaxes. I mean, there's no point in it because they begin to look ridiculous the moment they start speaking about these things. And we suspect that uh, they, they, the UFOs, which bring them, are controlled. Whether or not these creatures that are seen are the controllers of the, the UFOs, or whether they are merely projections from them, is another matter. The way they behave, the way they sort of float over the surface of a muddy field, and all this seems to suggest that they may be projections which are from the object into the minds of the beholders. This is one possibility. Then what is going on? We don't know. Are they some sort of attempt to control human beings? Do they select simple people for this purpose? Select them and work on them. The idea of control is not something new in, in, the, human, um, in the world of the human beings. I mean, ancient religions have all uh, sought to suggest that there is control from their deity. Jehovah and the Israelites, Allah, other people, control their people. 
So the idea of control is nothing new, but this is a modern form of control in a modern uh, frame of reference. Um, is, are these things coming from extraterrestrial sources? There's no real proof that they are. Staffordshire has had a whole crop of flying saucers. Spots in the sky, lights in the sky, strange things. But the strangest of all was seen one day over this cottage. Mr. and Mrs. Rustenberg were living there, quietly, out in the country. And, well, what you just tell me what you saw. Well, this was one ordinary day. I was waiting for my husband to come home from work, and my two sons went to Cypher to school. And I was getting changed, and I heard this terrific noise. It was just like a giant cauldron of water being poured onto a, a fire. A shh sort of noise, you know. And my first reaction was, oh, the children. I thought maybe a plane was crashing or something like that. And I uh, slipped my jumper on and went outside to find my two sons lying flat on the ground in the garden in front of the house, shouting, mummy, mummy, there's a flying saucer. Well, naturally, I just said, come on, don't be stupid. Come in the house. But felt sort of a strange sensation. Uh, when did my way up the side of the house to where we had a pump where we used to get all our water from and um, automatically looked up to see this well I can describe this huge Mexican hat it was stationary this thing and it was bright silver in color and it had a dome a dome it was tilted to sort of I could see the occupants in it you saw people in it? I saw people in it. There were two people in there. Um, these people were beautiful people. That's the only way I can des describe them. Um, they had long golden hair, like a page, bo page boy bob, just like the old kings. You used to see photographs of the old kings. And the, the color of the hair was golden. Now, I was really... What I, were they dressed in? They, they had a sort of a pole neck jumper affair, like a ski top suit, mm. in, in pale blue. Now, these people weren't sat behind, one behind the other, they were sat together, but this, whatever it was, was tilted so that I could see them and they could see me. Were you looking at them through windows, through portholes? Um, no, not portholes, it was just sort of the, like a cockpit, I suppose, that had this perspect or glass or whatever it was they could see me anyway and I could see them and um, they were uh, they had beautiful faces I shall never forget their faces as long as I live their foreheads seemed to be a, a bit larger than you know the the bottom of their faces as as normal people you would expect to see but um, maybe this is what was just the whatever they had around their heads which was like a transparent fishbowl and they just looked, and I was absolutely paralytic with fear. I couldn't move, although my mind was ticking over. And they looked so sympathetic that I was just mesmerized for what seemed to be, oh, ages, but it could have only been seconds. And I turned to sort of look down at the boys, was unaware that they were with me because I was so absorbed and the next thing, I looked up, and it was gone. How low had it been? It had been the, the height, I couldn't tell you. But the house that you've seen, it was just on top of the roof. It was hovering on top of the, the roof. How big was it compared with the size compared, of the house? It, it, it swallowed the, the whole circumference of, of the roof. I couldn't see. The roof was completely blotted out. The chimneys, I couldn't see. All I could see was this massive uh, object that I described as a, like a Mexican's hat, a Mexican hat without the bubbles. And then it flew away sideways or upwards? No, or? It, I, I didn't see. I just looked up and it had gone. But I assume it went straight up. Because for a short while after in the sky, I looked around and I said to my two boys, well, can you see anything? Can you see anything? And they said, there it is, Mum. And they pointed up and I watched it. It was just like a little cotton meal in the sky. And it circled us three times. It went round three times, and then it just shot off, and that was it. When I started to analyze my 
to myself afterwards. And I feared that I might have had a, a hallucination. But then I knew I, I hadn't had because my sons were so sure about what they'd seen and what I'd seen. And I went, it went through my mind that it was a secret uh, weapon from Russia. And then I thought, well, it can't be that because if they had something like that, they wouldn't need to fear anybody or anything. Were you but, scared by it? Did you run indoors? Oh, I was petrified. I couldn't move. I couldn't move a muscle. I was paralyzed with fear. But um, now I wouldn't be. Because now, when I look back, you know, I think, what, what, what an amazing thing to have happened, and for me to have seen it.